convivía con mis tres hijos, mi esposo, mis, con toda la familia. Era muy bonito la convivencia, estar todos los días conviviendo con ellos. A mis hijos salir afuera, al patio, a la calle, a jugar fútbol. Era todo muy bonito, pero se paga muy poquito. No podíamos salir adelante con nuestros tres hijos y, y para darles una, una vida mejor. Entonces fue por eso que nos venimos, pero, pero sin muchas dificultades económicas. Fue muy duro porque ellos me vinieron a, nos vinieron a despedir hasta la, el aeropuerto de la Ciudad de México y el hijo, mi hijo más grande se aferró a mí y me dijo que no me viniera. Fue muy duro, muy triste, pero teníamos deudas que cubrir en México y eso nos impulsó a venirnos para acá, porque, pero fue muy duro, muy, muy doloroso para ambos, porque dejar a, a una parte de mí eh, fue muy duro. Fue muy duro dejarlos, despedirme de ellos y dejarlos pues con mi suegra. Cuando mi hija dio a luz la primera vez, uh, yo estaba trabajando y, me, y me, di, me dijeron que el parto iba a ser uh, normal y mi hija se puso muy mal. Entonces yo estaba trabajando y yo no me podía salir y era muy complicado para mí porque mi hija necesitaba con urgencias entrar a, a cirugía y fue muy complicado para mí porque con urgencia yo necesitaba mandar el dinero y pues tenía que pedirle a alguien que me hiciera el favor de, de mandarlo o prestármelo para que me lo me hiciera el favor de mandar. They when someone has an emergency, they can have a very bad time. Uh, you know, I've had, I've heard personal like stories from our customers um, that are very touching and are very like you feel you feel the frustration that they felt. I, imagine your parent died and you can't be there with them because you're here. Um, but then you really want a proper burial and everything to be done as best as possible. And you send those $3,000 and there's no way for you to send it. It's either because it's 10 p.m. and all the stores are closed, or it's because stores are open, but you can only send a thousand bucks. And so you have all those limitations and, and like, what, what do you do? And that's, that shouldn't be the way, it's your money. You should be able to do whatever you want at any time you want with it. And so, um, you know, those, those type of situations You just wouldn't want to live through those. Um, there's enough pain already. Hablarle a, a, a algún familiar que me hiciera el favor, pero fue complicado porque tuvieron que ir por el dinero donde yo lo tenía, que estaba trabajando, y para mandarlo. Fue complicado, entonces, porque pues ninguna persona va a tener, ¿verdad? Mil o dos mil dólares para mandarlos. Imagine someone in the US. Uh, that person is in the US and then they have to, you know, they're probably living somewhere in the Central Valley in California. That's the bulk of the people sending money. And so they, they finish work, they have to commute for 30 minutes. So the people that have a car, they drive. The people that don't, they take a bus. That bus costs them $2.50, three bucks. It's taking them already like 30 minutes or they, or they pay the gas. Then after 30 minutes, they get to that store. Then because people are sending when they get paid, There's a massive line because everyone wants to send the same day. And so it's a long wait. And then repeat the commute on the way back. And then their family member has to repeat the exact same process that the person in the US just did. They have to do that in Mexico. And so in Mexico, the, most of the people receiving remittances are not in the big cities. They're in smaller towns. And so then what they have to do is commute from the smaller town to the bigger city And so that commute is not 30 minutes. That commute takes up to an hour, an hour and a half, depending on where people live. But at the end of the day, on average, remittances is the largest source of income for most of the people receiving them. Um, and, and so essentially that's, that's really solving poverty in countries like Mexico. And so we faced the problem of sending money back and forth. And we realized how hard it was, how expensive it was. It was always a nightmare to try to find like, how do I send you know, this transaction 
um, and you have to block an hour of your day to figure it out. We, we love what we're doing because essentially what we're trying to do is just make remittances as easy as possible. And so for us, what that means is we are a remittance service on WhatsApp um, that is powered by crypto to make the transaction real time. So the process is really very simple. Um, people go open their WhatsApp, which by the way is already in 65 to 70% of the hands of all of, of the people that are sending money. So technically we're already there. Um, they just have to find our number. Um, then they message us like they would message anyone else. And then after that, it's, it's game. We start asking the questions. So the whole process um, for a recurrent, recurrent customer um, takes about 40 seconds uh, to complete a transaction and the money is always delivered immediately. Ha cambiado todo nuestro proceso porque a la hora que, bueno, siendo una hora correcta, eh, meto el WhatsApp y mando los, los textos y es seguro que me contestan fácil, rápido y mande, mando el dinero y sin ningún problema. Es lo más contenta que me puedo sentir porque no necesito estar aquí en la ciudad o no estar en la ciudad para hacerlo. Muy fácil, se me ha, se me ha facilitado mucho esa, enviar con Félix. Our view is that success is not when people are you know, paying each other via crypto because it's crypto, uh, but really it is when crypto is powering everything behind the scenes and people don't even know that it's there. And when you can't even tell that that is happening, that's, that's really when you succeeded because it also means that mass adoption happened and, and you solved the problem. And so that really excites us um, because we think that's the future of this.